Okay, good morning and welcome. Uh, we will continue with study of the books that have been assigned for this course. We have completed the book of Hebrews and uh, we recently completed James. We will now go to Jude. Uh, it's just one chapter, so I thought, why not do Jude today? And then we will do first and second Peter in the coming weeks. So that's the book for us. We'll pray and get started. Let's pray together. Abba Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word, Lord, as we uh, look at the different scriptures, Lord. Uh, for today, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to our hearts, Lord. We know that your word is living and active, O oh God, uh, sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, we pray that it will impact our lives and uh, help us, O oh God, to always live, uh, Lord, according to your word and your purposes for us. Father, we ask for your blessings upon Thank you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, let's turn to the book of Jude. One of us can read the whole chapter. It's just one chapter. So we'll go through the whole thing. And then I'll go ahead and explain the way we did yesterday. OK. Uh, Jude chapter 1. Yes. You can hear me, Pastor? <laughs> okay. The whole chapter, right? Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Jude, a born servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, when I was very diligent to write to you concerning your co concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to con contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out of this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains and the darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to this, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh or set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a rivaling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally like brute beast. In these things they corrupt themselves. O to them, for they have gone into the way of Cain, have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feast, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, laid atom trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, homing up their own shame, when wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever now enoch the seventh from adam prophesied about these men also saying behold the lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment on all to convert to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which godly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts and their mouth, great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time 
who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, having eaten the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Saviour, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Jeffina. A very, very long passage there. Uh, but thankfully, Jude is only one chapter. So you've completed reading the whole book of Jude. And we'll now try to learn from what Jude is speaking about. So yeah i'll try to summarize it uh, for us uh, now jude is a letter written to the believers by judas the full name is actually judas the half brother of jesus so james was a half brother of jesus judas is a half brother of jesus it's nice to see the transformation that his brothers had and we saw earlier when we talked about james that they did not believe initially but after the resurrection uh, the brothers believed so what a life transformation they now have put their trust in jesus not because he's a family member but look at jude also he says bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. He could have just said brother of James and Jesus, but no, he's putting himself in submission to the authority of Christ. He knows that this is the Messiah. So born servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Actually, they both are brothers. Okay, so uh, it's wonderful to see a transformed life. And he's speaking to the believers. How do we know that? To those who are called, sanctified by God and the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. So they are believers. And uh, it begins with blessings. Uh, and he speaks mercy, peace, love be multiplied to you. So he takes the authority as one of the people in leadership. And uh, you know he is releasing blessings upon God's people. And he starts his uh, letter. He says, look, uh, beloved, that's the way to address God's people. Okay? They, are, they are loved by God and they are the beloved uh, even to the brethren. So beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Now, the point he's making is when he picked up his uh, 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 pen or whatever he used those days, uh, he actually wanted to speak regarding salvation and the usual matters related to salvation and how to you know live one's Christian life. But it's as if the Holy Spirit changed the theme of his writing. That's what he means. He says, I felt like the Holy Spirit is giving me another theme. So he heard from the Lord and he is going to address a matter. What is this matter? Paul writes about this matter in Acts chapter uh, 20, where he warns the Ephesian church and he says, look, there will come a time okay, where uh, there will be people rising up within you who are evil. So you've got to watch out for yourselves, watch out for your own lives. And he also commands the uh, uh, shepherds to take care of the flock because there will be people among the congregation who will come into the congregation and Paul calls them savage wolves. Okay, savage wolves, that's pretty strong. What do wolves, wolves do? You know, they attack and they, uh, uh, you know, destroy the sheep. And that will be the result of the deeds of these savage wolves. Uh, and our congregation or the people of God should not become prey to savage wolves. So even Paul warned us, 
about these matters and said uh, commit yourself to the word of god because the word of god will build you up and be careful because there will come a time when such people will rise up now uh, in the book of ephesians you know when we notice what he actually wrote to them so in the book of acts we saw the warning and uh, in the book of ephesians uh, he act, he writes to them he says that we all need to grow up to maturity because unless we are mature uh, we will be people who are tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine meaning when these people come these wrong teachers and false prophets uh, and they bring their kind of teaching unless a believer is strong what can happen to the believer you know he is like uh, being carried by the wind wind is flowing to the north okay let's move to the north wind is blowing to the south let's move to the south there's no stability there's no firmness there's no steadfastness because the believer is still immature the believer is not strong in the word uh, believer is not able to identify what is the truth and what is not so there is an emphasis on the maturing of the believer so that the believer can identify when there are false teachings when there is evil being propagated so you know uh, paul talks about all these things in uh, ephesians chapter 4 and he says that sometimes there is a trickery of men okay the cunning craftiness and deceitfulness plotting of men but when a believer becomes mature he or she would be able to identify so uh, maturity is the antidote okay uh, for all the believers as we are maturing we can overcome even if such false teachers arise so now we are understanding that god gave jude or judas a theme and that theme was a warning against uh, people who are preaching wrong things and living an ungodly life so he continues uh, further to talk about all all such people so uh, let's go ahead from verses 5 to 7 you know he uh says that the people of god right first they were brought out of the land of egypt but then what happened to them they were still destroyed what was the issue what was the issue so he's pointing out different issues in in the kind of faith that people carried unbelief later on they entertained unbelief because of which they were destroyed now he is referring in verse 6 to angels who did not keep their proper domain even they uh god has you know reserved in everlasting chains for the day of judgment so he's pointing out to unbelief and disobedience which is not acceptable by god so these angels who are these angels you know these angels we can um refer back to genesis chapter 19 okay uh who we know they engaged in unnatural sexual union with human beings and uh, these are all things that are not right because god gave them their sphere of uh, functioning and their authority and instructions but they left their proper domain they did not follow the authority of god the instructions of god and they did whatever they wanted so they were rebellious what did we see earlier unbelief now rebellion now this has led to them being reserved for the day of judgment so those are the angels that we are talking about now he is also referring to in verse 7 sodom and gomorrah sodom and gomorrah we know it was a very sinful uh, you know twin city where uh, again you know people were practicing sexual immorality uh, and that god was angry with them and uh, you know fire was the consequence of their uh, disobedience to god so these are all bad examples of unbelief of uh, rebellion of uh, disobedience and it's as if jude is putting it out for the believer to see and say look these things are not good for us okay we better stay away from these things because we know the consequences of the people who engaged in this manner uh, and uh, it's a warning okay be warned 
look at these examples and be warned because the consequences are uh, destruction. Now let's read on from verse 8. No? Uh, he goes ahead and he sort of uh, explains in more detail what these ungodly uh, people are like. And uh, he, you know, he gives their characteristics. So we'll go ahead and we will read them. He says, they, these dreamers defile the flesh. They reject authority. They speak evil of dignitaries. So these are the characteristics. What 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 are features that we can see? Again, we can see uh, pride. We can see rebellion. We can see a disregard for authority. You know, a lack of submission. Uh, we can see uh, that you know they they don't have reverence. Like they just speak evil. And it says over here, speak evil of dignitaries. Dignitaries could refer to the authority structures of God, right? And uh, even like, let's say, uh, heavenly beings. But when it comes to these people who are ungodly, they don't mind. They don't mind speaking against anything, anyone, even if uh, they are heavenly hosts. So, you know, they are fine to do that. And that's not good. And in verse 9, uh, you know, he goes on to elaborating on this, speaking evil of dignitaries. He says, yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. So we understand that there is, a, a, you know, that there is something about a contending regarding the body of Moses. Now, people ask the question, what is this about, you know, Moses, like all other prophets died and uh, he, he was buried. What is this contending for the body of Moses? See, we don't have much clarity. There are certain themes in the book of Jude. We will again see. It will talk about Enoch. Okay, Enoch prophesied. And uh, we don't have too much information about Enoch. Enoch walked with the Lord in the book of Genesis. That is there. And now we are reading that Enoch prophesied. So we've got to work with the information that we have we uh, don't have to go into the details of finding out because sometimes what happens people try to look way too much uh, in extra biblical content and uh, they they get uh, unnecessarily obsessed right uh, on on things that the bible is unclear about so if we don't have too much information there's no need to go searching uh, for information that cannot be validated so regarding this body of moses regarding enoch uh, we don't have much information actually uh, but i know there are people in the christian circle who write a lot about these matters uh, but then how do we validate because scriptures are not giving us uh, more light but yeah there is some incident in which there is a dispute regarding the body of moses but the point we have to understand here is the angel archangel michael who is who is uh, fighting with the devil respects god's order or authority structure so he does not speak an accusation carelessly against the devil Right? So uh, there is a structure, there is a way, there are authority gateways, there are many things that we have to consider. And the main idea is submission to authority, respecting the authority that God has uh, put in place. So that's the main point, that even Michael respected the structure. He did not just uh, speak an accusation against Satan. But what did he do? He said, let the Lord rebuke you because the Lord has the authority to do that. Something which he did not have the authority to do, he did not do. Okay. So that is regarding this. Now, uh, however, the ungodly people, they do that. They don't care what authority they have or they don't have. They'll just be ready to speak about anyone and everyone however they like, but that's not good. And then he goes on. He says uh, more characteristics of these people. They speak evil of whatever they do not know. Whatever they know, 
naturally like brute beasts in these things they corrupt themselves so speaking accusations about anyone everyone he says woe to them for they have gone in the way of cain have run greedily in the error of balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of cora again the same matters that he spoke of earlier what was the sin of cain unbelief he did make an offering to god but we studied in the book of hebrews that able sacrifice was accepted because there was faith in that sacrifice cain rejected because of unbelief that is the problem with cain the way of cain and what did that lead to it led to a lot many other sins he went from unbelief to hatred and uh, eventually what does hatred do why should we not keep hatred or the root of bitterness in our spirit because it will lead to murder and that's what happened in the case of cain where unforgiveness hatred bitterness and before you know it cain has murdered his brother abel okay today maybe people don't murder like literally murder but with our words we can hurt we can even kill isn't it with our words we can damage somebody's reputation with the words that we speak we call that slander and uh, that is not good so unforgiveness bitterness can lead to all these things and so we have to be careful that is the way of cain unbelief leading to other sins and then he talks about balaam what about balaam you know balaam had his own priority he did not have god's priority uh, yes he was a prophet but he wanted profit okay a profit for profit and that was not good he was ready to do anything ready to prophesy anything to get that is evil and jude points that out to have personal agenda and you know wanting uh, one's own benefit above the purposes of god that is balaam's problem and cora what was the rebellion of cora you know we read about cora uh, in the times of moses the sin of cora was that in numbers 22 uh, to be exact that's where we oh sorry number 16 uh, that's where we read about uh, cora so his issue was he resented god given authority he knew moses and aaron were in charge in charge but uh, he was not content with what god called him to do uh, and he was not ready to submit to godly authority over his life and you know he rejected he rejected uh, the authority of moses and god was very upset with him so that is the rebellion of cora who was not ready to respect godly authority so when these things happen uh, uh, jude is just pointing out look unbelief rebellion personal agenda these form the heart of these ungodly people and they are ready to talk about anyone uh, anything and uh, by these matters we can understand you know who they are now moving on to verse 12 Uh, he says they are spots in your love feasts while they feast with you without fear serving only themselves so you know it's quite a self explanatory ungodly people uh, they are living for themselves they may be part of the fellowship but uh, they have their own you know they they have their own focus and we must be careful and uh, he also says they are clouds without water carried about by the winds late autumn trees without fruit twice dead pulled up by the roots it simply goes against what jesus taught us in john 15 jesus said that the branches must bear fruit but he says these ungodly people there's no fruit this all the talk but when we examine the lives there's no results which can only come by genuine faith power of the word power of the spirit right so as believers discerning you know discerning by the features the characteristics the attitudes the behavior and the fruit of uh certain people who are disrupting the work of god uh 
Jude is presenting a warning. He's saying, if you see these things, be warned, be careful, identify such people, don't go with their teachings. Okay, the way Paul said, they are uh, wolves, he says. So it'll destroy, going with them, following their teaching will destroy our faith. So initially he said, contend for the faith, meaning the genuine faith which has been given to us. We carry a responsibility to uh, preserve it, make it grow and hand it over to the next generation. Okay, so that they can take it to the next level. So that is the responsibility which we all carry. And that's the point that Jude is trying to make with this letter to the believers. Contend for the faith. Identify, discern if there are people who are capable of corrupting that faith. Okay, so let's read on. Uh, so he says, yeah, they don't have any fruit. And he goes on uh, from verse 14, talks about, uh, you know, Okay, let, let's just read. He says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his, of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, he is just saying, he's using the example of Enoch prophesying. But what is the point? The point is, he's saying there is a judgment. So for the wrongdoing, there is going to be consequences. God himself will judge. The Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. What is this? It's talking about the uh, end times, isn't it? When the Lord will return uh, with his people and there will be a time when the Lord Jesus is going to judge and notice he says ungodly sinners have spoken against him end of verse 15 so the evil that has not just been spoken against uh, the truth not just been spoken against godly people but also the evil that has been spoken against God himself what are the consequences God will judge it will not go unnoticed so there is going to be a consequence for such sin. Okay, And we must remember that it's not like God is letting it all go. And yeah, nothing will happen. See, they are still thriving. No, there is going to be a judgment and consequence for evil. Now, once again, he moves into explaining more of the characteristics of the ungodly. He says... From verse 16, they are grumblers, complainers, walking around to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. So, you know, we can think of uh, someone who's really disrupting the uh, body of believers and uh, disturbing the body of believers. But they may have a nice uh, aura to them because... It says, flattering people to gain advantage, looking like someone who's good, looking like someone who's wanting to do nice things. But what exactly is going on? They are damaging with their attitudes, with their behavior, with their words. Okay, So these are the uh, characteristics of ungodly people. Now, this is what ungodly people are like, right? Not submitting to authority, rebellious, no faith, um, uh, sinful uh, not careful about words, so many things, grumblers, complainers, uh, they are part of the, uh, the fellowship, uh, they are flattering people, and yet you know, they are evil before the Lord. God will judge them and we must discern them. So this was all about ungodly people. Now he starts to speak to the believers. So from verse 17, he says, But you, beloved, Remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, there will be such people, but you, you, what should you do? We must remember God's word. We must remember God's instruction, even in the last days. And verse 18, 
how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust so he's saying also remember that you were already told by paul okay he says apostles you were told by paul and we are going to study the book of second peter shortly and even peter talks about false prophets he talks about ungodly people and the consequences of their sin so the apostles paul told us peter told us it's not a surprise when in the last day such people rise up ungodly people so remember their words we knew these people are going to come and they are going to try to uh, damage the faith but you be warned of these things okay in verse 19 again he says these are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit so by their actions we can understand you know what what they are doing and uh, they are not carrying the spirit of god in them right it's uh, uh, selfishness and pride with which they are working now one is you beloved you need to know these things don't get shocked because we have already been told second what we should do verse 20 he says but you beloved building yourself up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit was 21 keeping yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life so he's saying yes these things will happen but you just make yourself strong how to make oneself strong praying in the spirit okay keeping ourselves in the love of god and seeking god seeking god for his mercy unto eternal life so here are our responsibilities now we can't change if uh, these things happen around us but we can definitely take responsibility of our faith and be strong in god so that is what we can do uh, and then he goes on he says and on some have compassion making a distinction but others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment defiled by the flesh so he says when we see people wandering away from god what should we do we must try to bring them back remember even james said that someone who is wandering away uh, you're saving a soul if you try to bring them back so on some we can we can work with them we can have compassion and we can help them out for some we may have to be little firm and strict so he says say others save with fear so we are being little strict but what is the result of that we are just trying to help them okay so that must be the outcome uh and uh, while doing that okay another very important thing for us to be careful about now we work with people who may get into sin and they may go far away from the lord and we are here trying to correct them pray for them uh, you know counsel them bring them out but we have to be careful for ourselves so he says hating even the garment defiled by the flesh so we have to be very clear to protect ourselves know what is right what is wrong and uh, we should not also put ourselves in a vulnerable position so that there is a danger there also so we must really hate what is wrong hate the sin not the sinner okay and be very clear about that uh, and be careful while we are correcting them when can that happen when we know for sure you know what is right what is wrong what is acceptable and what is not and finally you know he closes off with a blessing uh, and and he says now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to god our savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen so he says uh, i'm warning you about these matters but we have a god who is strong we have a god who can help we have a god who can give grace okay and he is able to keep us from stumbling so we don't have to fall into all these sins that we just discussed because if you rely on the lord if you keep walking towards maturity our god is able 
to keep us from st stumbling and or even on the last day you know ultimately uh, he we need to hold on till the end isn't it that's what jesus said so how to hold on till the end god will help us he will present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy okay so that is so beautiful and uh, uh, getting to the finish line right and having joy i'm sure your batch knows it because you're coming to the finish line of your uh, course this year um, victoriously and just uh, think in along the same lines when we reach heaven when we reach that spot when we are finally before the heavenly father having uh, fulfilled god's purpose and uh, having held on to the faith okay before his presence presence of his glory with exceeding joy can you think with me that as much as we are happy god is also happy in that moment how will that be so we'll be in the presence of god we'll be filled with joy god will be filled with joy now here is a child here is a son here is a daughter they finished the race uh, they kept the faith they were strong in it and uh, you know there is rejoicing in heaven and that is the moment that you know we are hungry for that's the moment that we are all waiting for and we'll hear the words of our heavenly father say you know well done a good and faithful servant and so jude is blessing he's saying even if such things happen around us you keep yourself strong and look to that finish line uh, that one day we can stand there and uh, verse 25 to god our savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen so exalting god as he closes this um if there are any more um thoughts any any other things that we want to talk about so far we can do you think it's relevant for jude to warn us like this yeah yes we we can uh, you know see that because uh during his times you know maybe there there were there were things that were going on um uh, which he was not happy about uh there there could have been issues now if we study church history we do see that there have been compromises you know uh time and again there have been things that that uh, took place in the church that really tried to affect the faith which was handed over by the early church like uh, if you go back to the time when you know the church and uh, state separation happened you know constantine i think it has to do with uh, uh, ad 306 337 around that time uh, we know they separated church and a uh, state okay and uh, the state started dictating lot of things for the church so whatever the state said is what people were doing and then there was this whole uh, distinction between clergy laity uh, and then eventually you know we we see uh at the time of martin luther we see there were practices in the church which were not at all they did not have any uh basis biblically and so you know martin luther he comes and he contends in the 17th century so there there were uh, battles to go back to the actual faith which was handed over by the apostles so it ha it has happened in history uh even today you know we do run the risk of seeing this faith diluted and we must not let that happen we must not let that happen by anyone else or by ourselves also so firstly this is a very personal thing we must determine to be strong in the word and uh, keep ourselves true to the word and when we do that you know we become those channels who uh, are keeping that faith and also if there are others you know discerning if there are others who are uh, having these qualities that we are talking about over here then we should be warned and uh, if we can save some wonderful but then if they are not willing to listen then at least we must protect the faith and uh, you know keep it pure 
so just some additional thoughts uh, anything else that you may want to discuss we can talk about so when we do second peter it will be like a repetition of jude cuz he'll say almost the same things that uh, judas is saying all right i think we've got an idea of what you know judas stating in this book and you can use david gozik's commentary to study further we also did a sermon not uh, so far away just last year december Uh, and uh, it's quite elaborate it's called contend for the faith uh, and you can download it from apcw.org it will be very helpful to study the book of jude as well so let's uh, pray and close then i want to request uh, one of us to please go ahead and pray Let's pray. Father in heaven we thank you for this wonderful lesson we've had about our little brother Jude. We know that the the book was so brief but uh, it is filled with a lot of knowledge, wisdom and understanding. So Lord, let us know that it was written for those who were there those days and those of us who are here in the present Lord. Let us try to put everything that we've learned into practice so that we can see how we can get against the work of the devil i do pray in the name of the father son the holy spirit and everybody says amen 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 thank you thank you uh, lubega thank you everyone god bless you uh, we shall meet uh, after the easter weekend so uh, have a blessed time of worship and uh, yeah we'll come back together and learn more from the books of uh, first and second peter thank you and bye for now